Hey gang, good morning, how's it going? I'm Todd Nock, welcome to my YouTube channel as we continue this week's post-it pop art video series. So this week finishes up some X, or not X-Men villains. This is an X-Men villain I'm gonna draw today, Sabretooth, for the series of Marvel villains this week. Um, and I uh, hope you're doing well during this coronavirus uh, stay at home order. Hopefully you're staying healthy. Hopefully you're staying well. Hopefully you're keeping those hands washed, especially if you have to go outside or get a delivery. Uh, make sure you wash your hands after opening up that box just to be on the safe side. Just a little 20 second wash and you should be, things should be, uh, nice and good. So, uh, gang, I'm so glad you're here. So uh, hopefully you're having fun with me. Hopefully you're learning some stuff. If you're just new to my channel here, welcome. So glad you're here. Long time viewers, always appreciate y'all hanging out with me. So, um, yeah, today we're going to draw Sabretooth. Sabretooth, um, Wolverine, uh, one of his many arch nemeses. I think that's the correct pluralization of the word nemesis. So enough jibba jabba. Let's flip the camera around. Let's get to drawing. Just a re little readjust of the rig and we'll crack right into this. All right. I'll try to respond to questions and comments while I draw, but a lot of the focus is gonna be on the art and sharing my tips and tricks, but you never know. I'd readjust the lighting here. And this live stream is ready to get, get drawn. So let's see. Got some orange post-it notes here for uh, Sabretooth, he's got a lot of browns and yellows and oranges in his costume, kind of golden colors, so I thought maybe an orange would be nice. Uh, I'm going to use my trusty rusty Unikura Toga .3 HB lead mechanical pencil. And we're just going to start with that skull shape. So for the, the face, step one, that's right, ironic fist. This must not be your first post-it note vid. Got, I gotta start with that skull. Gotta do my underdrawing first. Bring the sides of the head to the jaw, to the chin, just to kind of get a rough shape for the head here. Center line. Eye line, nose line, mouth line, roughly Halfway from the top to the chin, eye. Halfway from the eye to the chin, nose. Halfway from the nose to the chin, mouth. And these are just generalized um, proportions here. Oops, sorry gang, gotta fix my desk here for a sec. It's kinda got that little knocky sound. Gotta, gotta find a screwdriver and fix that part there. All right, we shouldn't have that knocking sound anymore. All right, so. Sabretooth's a bigger guy, so we're going to give him a thicker neck. And he's a feral guy, much like Wolverine, so we're going to kind of hunch those shoulders. Kind of angle them down. Where the, the neck muscles kind of come down here like a V shape. Like it gets a big V. That's where my shoulder bones are. So it gives me, gives me my basic neck and shoulder muscles. So let's always like to figure out where the eyes are first. Because I think we connect with the character's eyes. No matter who the character is, even in real life, I think we connect with the eyes. That's why they say the eyes are the window to the soul. And I think in many ways that's true. And um, the eyes can say so much. They are so expressive. So I like to really focus on the eyes, get the eyes there. If eyes are the window to the soul, the eyebrows are the drapes. They are the window treatment to the soul. The shutters maybe, well, I guess the eyelids would be shutters. The, 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 the eyebrows are the awning. To the soul. That's it. They are the awning. And he has really bushy eyebrows. So he has a... You really want to... Really want to... 
flare those out. Down the, a bridge down to the nose. Nostrils. Now we're going to have angry Sabretooth because he is... Even when he's happy, he's still mean, you know? If we ever see him laughing, he's laughing at someone or laughing at something he did to hurt someone. So he is a grade A, I'm just going to say it, a jerk. But he's a bad guy. We're going to give him a big scally mouth with lots of teeth. It's so like from the center there, we're going to pull, angle up the sides, come down, and then curve that bottom lip up a little bit. And that would be the bottom of his bottom lip. Give him a little more chin, give him a little stronger chin. Adjust the sides of his face for a bit of a stronger jaw. From the nostrils there, we're going to have those muscles pull. So this is what, like if I have to draw someone making a facial expression I'm not used to, I'll either make that facial expression in the mirror or, ha or take a, f a selfie of myself making that expression so I can see how does my face pull? How do the muscles pull? And then I adjust for the facial structure of the character I'm drawing, but I get a basic idea. Sometimes I'll even Google image search certain emotions. There are a lot of stock photos out there that, uh, like man laughing, woman crying. And you can utilize that photo reference to see how does the shape, the face of the shape change depending on the expression a character is making. And that kind of helps vary our expressions. All right, so then we have his teeth through here. A little bit of fangs. We'll flesh these out more in the inks, but that kind of gives me a guideline to work with. Now we're going to put him in his his uh, uh, the costume that he's worn quite a bit since the 1990s. It's the brown headgear with the with the sideburns that kind of flare out on the sides there, and then this part is brown, and he's got the the brown headgear that kind of goes down his nose a little bit. And then it goes across his forehead. So this will be all dark color, like the dark brown. And then he has the hair. I think Jim Lee designed this costume in the early 1990s. Really great look. I thought it was a really cool look for Sabretooth. I know I flipped out over it as a kid. We're just going to start putting in these wisps of hair. You can make his hair as long or short as you want. And if you don't have post-it notes, I didn't say this at the top of the show, but if you don't have post-it notes, draw on whatever you have. Sketchbook, notebook pad, some uh, college or legal or school lined uh, uh, notebook paper. I can't tell you how many drawings I did on notebook paper when I was a kid in school so so much I still have some of those like from when I was in elementary school someday I'll show y'all here on my channel you can see what Todd knock art looked like at age eight but that's for another time another day another live stream um, let's see so kind of got the hair flipping up there I might make some adjustments as we go and then he's got this big mane like a like a lion's mane, kind of furry, fuzzy um, collar, for lack of a better word, that kind of runs over his shoulders. So I'm kind of thinking of how it would kind of flow like this, and then mirror image um, on the other side.
Okay, and then the costume is mostly brown, so it's going to have a lot of dark aspects to it. So just going to give myself a visual idea of where all the dark parts are. So I'm just kind of beefing up these shapes, kind of spotting the blacks, just considering the center part of each muscle grouping right here, the neck, you know, some of the neck striations here on the inside. We can add more for all the, the, the tension. Right here underneath the collarbone. So there'd be color on the collarbone, a little shadow underneath it. Through the forehead here. And his face, we're really going to crinkle it up. Because he's in a bit of a ragey sort of expression there. So the, the eyes, the corners of the eyes, the corners of the, uh, or the, from the nostrils. There's going to be a lot of flaring up. So we're going to come in with a lot of detail lines on his face. But these detail lines are going to be very, I'm, I need, I'm going to be very thoughtful about where I put the detail lines. Because I'm not just about putting a bunch of lines all over the place. I'm going to consider the shape and angles of each aspect of his face. It's like the cheek, the nose, there's the tip of the nose, the nostril, this part that goes around his mouth. The mouth itself, the bottom lip, the chin, and the muscles that run through here. These are all things I have to think about, and the direction those lines go would be um, where I put the, the detail lines to convey the, the shape and form. Like his eyes would go more slender because of the way his brow and uh, eyelids, in fact, we'll have a little bit, just rough in a little bit of his uh, iris in there just to get a vibe. Or maybe we'll just go straight white because sometimes his eyes go like Batman, Wolverine kind of white. So I just may do that instead just to make him look even more scary. All right, so now it's time for the inks. Um, I was thinking of using brown microns because he's all like warm colors, browns, yellows, tans, um, his skin tone, um, but uh, would be a, a lighter color, but still in the brown family. So I'm wondering, do I use browns or do I go black instead? Use black line. Hmm. You know what? I think I'm going to use brown. I'm going to use a very dark red for the what would translate as the brown of his... Face. I just really like doing the uh, these color hold line art. So I'm going to use the brown my crown right now. Oh, I see people weighing in. They want to see the brown. All right, glad we're on the same page. Thanks for weighing in, gang. Thanks for weighing in, live viewers. Appreciate input. So I'm going to do the hair first because a lot of the hair kind of overlaps over his headgear thing. So I like to work foreground to background. How is this process called? This process is called the inking stage because I'm using ink pens to put in the final line work, the final permanent line work with ink. So in comics we call this inking. So before I was doing the penciling stage, the kind of layout and uh, sketch pencil stage. Kind of two aspects to the pencils because I have to figure out the layout is when you figure out where everything is going to go. All the shape placement and uh, and then penciling we, we tighten up those details and then with inks we make those final details permanent. Make our final selections, make our final textures. Well final line wise. Color can then add another level of uh, choice, texture, shape, lighting, mood. I called it something different. Ah, you know what? I don't remember what I said. <laughs> uh. Oh, color hold. Are you, are you referring to color hold? Still inking, but I'm using, uh, but color hold here is I'm using colored lines instead of black lines. In comics, we say color hold. Like when I draw the line art for comics, I draw in black and white. 
And then when I pass the, 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 the black and white file onto my colorist, Rochelle Rosenberg, one of the best colorists in the industry, and I'm so thankful to have her coloring my work. Uh, so she can color the page while I, I move on to the next page. We're kind of at a, an art assembly line. So she colors digitally and does killer work. I'm sure you've seen a lot of her work. She is amazing. She is a superstar um, for sure. Definitely one of the best colorists in the biz. She, um, it, it, there's like a certain effect, like fire or some, especially fire energy effect, things like that. She'll, she'll take the line art of the flames and make the line like a dark orange or a shade of red or something like that. Or if it's like Cyclops's um, optic blast, she'd turn my black line I used to make the, the blast line, she'd make that red so it looks more ethereal or, or energy-like. Um, and so I like to do it, and sometimes we do it on the face, like you'll see a character's face or blonde hair that the, the line art is knocked back into like a shade of brown. That is to convey just kind of the softness of the of the skin tone or the hair. Now, I like to do it here sometimes on these to give it kind of like an animated look, like an animated cartoon. Because sometimes they'll do that in animation, especially. In, uh, and so, so it's called a color hold because we're, we're taking the black, and now I'm not using black, but if I were using black digitally, I could change the color of the line art, which my colorist does in the, in the comic. So now we have here for his blonde, uh, eyebrows doing pretty much all the hair right now because so much of it is sticking out the the top or overlapping everything else so if color hold was the term you were wondering there was a very long explanation <laughs> as to what that process is and how we use that in in comics and why I'm choosing to use it here I just think it looks cool I think it just creates a fun cool visual effect um, as the, the colored lines uh, complement or can sometimes contrast the color itself. Yes, it was color hold. Oh, good, good. I'm so glad I locked in on what it was the original question was. So, so glad we were able to figure that out. So I'm going to use the same brown for his skin tones. Let's see, and we're going to work on this mane because it overlaps and it's kind of a tan color. So I'm going to continue to use this brown. We'll get to details of his face momentarily. This may be the first time I've drawn this, uh, this uh, saber tooth design. I don't know if I've ever drawn this one. I have drawn Sabretooth in the comics. I know in my Nightcrawler series, I drew a flashback scene to the Mutant Massacre. And so I had this big double page spread of the X-Men from the 1980s era X-Men, because this was a flashback scene, uh, in the sewers of New York City where the Mutant Massacre uh, took place. And Sabretooth was a big part of that. He was a part of Mr. Sinister's Marauders. So I drew his original design not this uh, design that would come about, you know, six years later, so in, in the early 90s. So um, so this might be my first time to draw this Jim Lee era. Actually, I might have drawn it once before on a post-it note long, long ago, now that I think about it. I think I might have drawn this one time before, but that would be the only other time I can recall. So I'm trying to be very thoughtful on how I can convey this uh, this big fur collar. I'm imagining the fur kind of connects to his costume. So it's like where it connects to his body is the root of the hair, much like how the hair connects to the head. So I, I want the cur the lines are more concentrated at the at the where where they connect, and then as they get further out to the outer perimeter of the of the collar. It's going to be lighter, it's going to be fewer lines to convey a sense of, of light hitting there. I 
And here behind the head would be more concentrated lines to create a sense of shadow. Has the quarantine made me want to draw more? Um, I always want to draw. So um, I love to draw. I draw for a living. It is my career. I'm a professional comic book artist, so I'm drawing every, pretty much every day. Um, whether I'm drawing for the comic books I'm working on, drawing covers, or just drawing for fun, I just have a crazy passion for drawing. So um, if you're directing that question towards me, um, I'd be drawing anyway, quarantine or no. If you're addressing that to the rest of the viewers, yeah, feel free to weigh in, everybody. Is the quarantine making you want to draw more? Are you finding some, some fun or uh, entertainment or a chance to learn in this time of uh, quarantine? Has, the, has drawing been a, a good release or outlet for you? So I'm going to a darker red here for the brown part of his costume, uh, just because the brown would be a doctor, darker color, not a doctor color. I don't know where that word came in, a darker color. <laughs> so it can help differentiate between the yellows, tans, his skin tone, and the brown of his costume. Yeah, it's, it's been a help to y'all. Drawing has been a help. You do more animal studies, very cool. I'm almost doing an animal study in this sense because Sabretooth is such a feral character. He's almost more animal than man at, at times. That's a joke. <laughs> because he is a man, but he's a animal powered based man. Anyhow, y'all get jokes. I don't have to explain jokes. I do apologize for the dad jokes I deliver at times. Thanks for being so patient with me. So let's see. The brown runs down his neck to his shoulders. But he's not Animal Man. No, Animal Man is a different character. He's a character over at DC Comics. You're very correct in that. He is not Animal Man. But he is an animal-themed man. Sabretooth. So. But, yes, we would not... You would not look at him and go, Oh, that's Animal Man. That's Buddy Baker over at DC Comics. We don't want to get it twisted. Just a little more collarbone here. So I think I'm going to sculpt out the, the, the darker shadows of his uniform rather than doing that in line art. I think I might do that in color instead. I'm thinking. I might change my mind here at any moment as I continue to flesh out these shapes. So you see how I kind of drew in these shadow shapes? I'm wondering if I should keep those or just sculpt it with color. I'm still torn. I'm still making this decision as I work. So then his headgear runs down the center of his nose to a point. All right. In the meantime, let's switch over to the zero, double zero five micron here to start putting in some details in his face. So I'm going to start with picking select shapes of his nose. Flare those nostrils. Nostrils be flaring. I'm going to start to put, pull those muscles of his face. If the nostrils are flaring, then we're going to have wrinkles here from how the face pulls. So I'm going to ride those lines. And then his cheek, those, those lines would pull. So I'm, I'm going in the direction of the muscle and the angle of the face. Now for his mouth. Really going to get that snarly growl. Yesterday we had uh, um, Thanos giving us a, 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 a sneer. But here today with Sabretooth, this is more of a snarl. 
So they're similar in some ways, but as you can see here, a snarl is allowing us, or at least this level of snarl, the snarl borderlining on growl. Actually, I need a thicker micron here for the bottom lip. So I'm going to switch between the thin and the thick. Um, is going to give us a different shape to his face between the snarl and the growl. Way more than a sneer, I can tell you that much. Way, way more than a sneer. So around, so the muscles pulling from the chin around his mouth, these are the shapes I'm going to want to keep in mind. See his eyes, our angry eyes. Maybe one eye is a little more open than the other eye because he's so enraged. Wrinkles by his eyes, curving around the cheek. A little bit of the eyelid there. So it's okay for all these lines to really wrinkle up his face. We want that here for a character like, like Sabretooth. We're going to put some stubble here on his chin. So I'm going to rot, I'm going to put rows of these little tiny tick marks, the angle around his chin. I'm trying to show the curvature of his face, of his chin. So it's not just putting lines down any which way. It is, there's a thought to it, maybe a little dimple there in his chin. So it curves to his face, maybe a little bit of the hair into the mustache area, the upper lip. I angle it to curve around the face. And if you're not quite sure, look at a photo of facial hair. Okay, and go back to this dark red, kind of beef up the sides of his head here, give him a little more pop. Beef up the sides of his jawline there. All right, so now we got to ink his teeth for sure. I'm going to use a black micron here because it'll be dark inside of his mouth. Top row of teeth, get the fangs on the sides. And then the teeth arc back into the further part of his head. Because this illustration is so small, I don't need to draw every tooth, but just the ones going towards the inner part of his mouth to show shadow. And now the fangs on the bottom row of teeth. I'm actually going to show the bottom bottom teeth as opposed to showing the top teeth. I don't know why it is. It works better that way, showing the top teeth. Every top tooth looks can look weird, but showing every bottom tooth actually works. It might be because the bottom teeth are further from the light, quote unquote. It's not pure science, but it's kind of the artistic design aspect of it all. So um, it just kind of makes sense. It just kind of works for me, I guess. Um, Right, now I'm trying to figure out, do I go straight white eyes, or do I put the pupils and irises in? Not sure which way to go. Because he could go either way. This would look cool either way. White, I got to vote for white. Anyone else want to weigh in? Either way. Split vote there, okay. White eyes, that's two for white eyes. White, white, I think the whites, the white eyes have it here. White, 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 white. Oh, we have someone for eyes and irises is better. White, white, white. So many more whites, okay. Well, I'm gonna go with the majority. I think the white will look cool. I think he could look cool either way. Ivory. <laughs> Someone wants ivory. Can I get a word for eggshell? A vote for eggshell. 
I'm using the kneaded art gum eraser. Got a lot of graphite on here. I need to pull off of the paper. As best I can. And now it's time for the colors. I'm going to be using Copic marker colors, but you can use whatever you have on hand. Please feel free. Now I'm going to beef up his eyelids here after the erasing process just to make sure they're nice and bold. All right. So now it's time for Copic color. That's the finished line art here for Sabretooth. While that dries, I'm just going to click Recap all my pens here. Recap them so they don't dry out. All right, so we're gonna ooh, see a little more graphite up there in the hair. All right, we're gonna start with his hair. We're gonna start with the blonde hair. Uh, I'm gonna handle this blonde hair the same way I did with the Star Girl. Do y'all remember when I drew the Star Girl a couple of weeks ago? Star Girl from Justice Society. I'm gonna start with this khaki color. It's E84. Color with whatever you have. If it's crayons, colored pencils, watercolor, go for it. Have fun. If it's another brand of marker, awesome. Use whatever you got on hand. This is all about having fun. So I'm gonna put this kind of khaki, tannish color as a, the base shadow coming from the root of the head, working towards the light, working, working toward the white or the upper part of the hair. Uh, some there in his Sideburns, a little bit here in his eyebrows. I don't know why I had to make that sound like a question. His eyebrows, maybe? Now so for some Y21. I'm going to color over that khaki color, that tan color, with this shade of yellow. Just going to go ahead and fill in all of his eyebrows and sideburns with this color because it's a small area here. So I can't get super detailed with a lot of color. Oops. Seeing even more graphite. I did a lot of sketching to to break this bad boy down. And then a little bit of Y double zero. Might be almost imperceptible, but it just kind of this light shade kind of blends everything together. All right, let's tackle his skin tone. So we're gonna start with a E02, which is a little darker than what I would use on white paper. I often say that because I am working on colored paper here for these post-it videos. I'm just gonna sculpt out all the darker parts of his skin tone. So under the nose, under the eyebrows, around the eyes, definitely gonna get really shadowy around the eyes. Bottom part of his chin, here at the cheekbones, kind of following the lines that I've put down. Helps me follow the muscles and angles of his face. Now for some E01, going a shade lighter. Eat up more of that real estate. Okay, so that takes care of that. I'm gonna use a little bit of pink in his nose, some R20. And mind you, this is because of colored paper. So I just want to darken up the nose to give it a little, little pop off of his face, a little bit here at the cheeks. Not to make him look cute or anything, but just to bring some different texture to the, uh, to the color of his face. Because it's not just peach, peach colors. There's a lot of pink, in a, especially in a Caucasian face. So I'm kind of walking that line between peach colors and pink colors for this type of skin tone. All right, so let's, um, let's t handle the, the, the mane here. So it's kind of a, a I don't want to do, do kind of like a blonde. So it's going to be very light browns, very, very light, light browns, at least starting off here, kind of working towards a white. So I'm going to start with some E31, also called Brick Beige. 
I went to school with a guy named Brick Beige. He was a foreign exchange student. Really nice guy. I wonder what's up with Brick Beige. Um, dad joke. Sorry. Uh, so just at the, the root of the hair. Just going to kind of pull that and it's going to get lighter as we move to the top. Maybe a few strands, especially behind his head here. Now that I think about it. But definitely through the center here is going to be more open. Actually, I'm going to bring in a little darker in that E3 family, some E34. Just like that. And now some warm gray. I'm going to come in with warm gray right now to kind of help create a different shade of tan. Some warm gray too, I think would work just fine. And just kind of color over those colors. Now we see a little bit of the outer part of his, um, his costume and these areas were orange. So I'm gonna use a little YR68, just a little bit underneath. Just a very teeny tiny bit, because I want it's more of a light orange, so I'm going to come in with more YR12. And now for the brown of his costume. Actually, before we get to the brown of his costume, I just want to color his tongue with a very dark pink, some RV95. All right, now for the brown of his costume. Now it's brown costume time. So it's more traditional brown. So you can use a very classic brown. I'm gonna use some E57. I'm gonna do all the uh, dark parts I would have done in the line work. So on the sides of his forehead, right there at his brow, maybe use the color to show the crinkle in his brow bottom parts of his little ear holders, down through the jaw. Then for the neck, on each side of the neck muscle. So I'm gonna start with a lot here under his chin to create a shadow. That chunk of uh, neck muscle there, or shoulder muscle, I'm gonna use that dark brown there. So I'm starting to sculpt what I would have done in inks. And then here, dark underneath that collarbone, leaving the part, the bone part, see it kind of creates that sense of, a, of the bone. All right, next up is, um, need a lighter brown, so we'll try some E55. See how this works. So it's just two shades lighter than the E57 I just used. It's working okay. It's a little lighter than what I thought I would want, but we'll see. Once I start putting it in, maybe I'll do a second layer to try to darken it up a little bit. It's actually not too shabby now that I look at it. But actually, now that I think about it, maybe I want to try another shade of brown. This E25, do a little test down here. Yeah, I kind of like that. So I'm going to pull some of this E25 through here just to kind of darken up some of those lighter areas that I feel are too light. So this is very experimentational of me right now. Trial and error. I'm taking a risk, but it's based on my previous knowledge. That I feel like I could take this risk without too big of a fear of totally jacking everything up. All right, so that takes care of the browns of his costume. Now we'll come in, so see, they're very warm colors. We got a lot of warmth going on right now. So I'm gonna come in with cool grays though. Cool grays, in the name right there, a very cool color. And we're gonna come in and start putting in shadows, some realistic shadows. 
Now I'm going to get really shadowy under these eyes, and this cool gray too is just not cutting it, so I'm going to get much darker here soon. But other parts of his face, this cool gray might work. Actually, I need to bump this up to a cool gray 3 for the fur. So just here in the parts, the root of the fur collar, just pull up really, pulling up really quickly, kind of letting it feather out to get a nice fuzzy feel to not only his fur, but I can also do this for his hair here as well. Maybe some here in his teeth. We'll be coming in with a white pencil for his teeth in a little bit. Now some cool gray four. It's a much darker, uh, it's a mid-range shadow, or, or mid-range shade, which I want to put right around his eye, eyeballs to create a very shadowed look around his eye. Makes him look creepier, scarier, more menacing. Because it's shadow, but it almost creates a sense of a mask. It's like, and it's going to make those white eyes really pop when it's time to do the white eyes. Puts the same shadow color underneath his nose, a little bit underneath this muscle pulling from his nose, like right underneath, creates depth. See how his, his face is popping there? Little shadow here pulling down from the eyes down to his cheek and running down the bridge of his nose here. Put some on this side because we're establishing the shadow on th this side of his face. A little bit through there. Can you even use some of this in the uh, really darker, further parts of his uh, fur? Maybe a little bit underneath here, uh, over that orange part, creating a shadow. I need to go even darker for the browns of his uniform. So I'm going to start with a cool gray 5, see if this is dark enough. Just going to drop in just some, just some chunks, some chunks of gray. That was the name of my garage band back in high school, Chunks of Gray. We were did a lot of songs by The Cure. We covered a lot of Cure songs in Chunks of Grey. Yes, dad joke. That was another dad joke, gang. Pretty much the only jokes I know. Dad jokes. I try to keep them to a minimum, but today I am just on and popping when it comes to... No, I'm not, I'm not serious. I did not have a... a High school garage cure cover band called Chunks of Grey. I did not. Just one of my recurring jokes. If I say something that sounds like a band name, I'll say that was my band, my garage band name in high school. All right, so we have put a little bit of this really dark, cool gray five under his eyes there, really sculpted out. Now he looks a lot more menacing than he did before. You want to use a little bit of this cool gray five right up underneath the eyelid to create a shadow. Now it's a very dark shade of gray. If, you just to, if this is your first time watching one of my videos, I only do this because it's on dark col colored paper. Do I have kids? Nope, I don't have kids, but I do have dad jokes. It is the weird contradiction of my life. Now, I'm going to come in with um, some white pencil, color over that gray and the eye to get a white eye. So the white pencil over that darker gray now makes it the light shade of gray I would use if this was white paper. And we're going to color the teeth because his teeth are white. So just a little like that. And now his, that's how I get white onto this colored paper. Am I going with the white ink as well? Absolutely I am. You are not a first time viewer you know that the white ink is, is to come. But right now I want to put in a little bit of a dark background there. So I'm going to start with, um, I'm going to start with uh, some neutral grays. I'm going to start with neutral six. I'm going to just do my classic dark to light fade. So 
We'll just color in some neutral six right there like that. And you actually pull down like that. Now we're going to kick it to neutral four. And that white, white gel pen finishing move is coming up next. Cool gray four. And then finish with some cool, or not, not cool gray, neutral gray, neutral gray. These are neutral grays. Neutral gray six, four, and then two. My apologies, everybody, for saying cool when I meant to say neutral, using neutral grays. You can use cool grays too. Nothing wrong with that, but I just didn't want to misinform you on the colors I am actually technically using at this very moment. There we go. Oh, there we go. He is popping, popping from that background now. Popping fresh. So, next, actually, now that I look at this, I want to come in really kind of angle that these eyelids down a little bit more to really get a little more anger in there. That's that's it. Now let's see. Coming in with the Uniball Signo white gel pen. My classic finishing move. Put the white perimeter around saber tooth. Again, just letting it bump right up to the line art, but not over the line art. Because I want to keep those thicks and thins around his contours. You know what, actually what I want to do is bring this white down into, this is a design choice I'm, I'm making here, down into his head, behind his, to give him a little pop from his mane. So I'm not going all the way down, but just a little bit, just to give his hair, just to create a third dimension here. Not like 3D, necessarily, I uh, guess uh, design-wise in that sense. But there's like the head, the mane, then the background. So it gives his head a little more, uh, a little more pop on the page. And you want to go put a little bit of a, some white highlights here in the eyeball, just to give it a little more brightness. Let's see here. I'm trying to decide, do we put Sabretooth into a snowy situation like we did with the Wolverine one a couple of weeks ago? Or do we just leave him as is? Because Wolverine and, and, and Sabretooth, you know, have often had a, a tussle in the uh, snowy, snowy north yeah? All right. So then, I'm going to grab some of my uh, drafting tools here. We're just going to give a little extra elements to this one. So right now I'm going to come in with my French curve and my white pencil here. And I'm going to start in with some initial snow lines. So the snow is coming from this direction. It's going to sweep in at some different angles. And this is just kind of the light snow here first. It's just subtle. So right now I have some lines going over him. And some are cutting it slightly different directions because it's a bit of a blizzardy sort of day. Not like he went to Dairy Queen to get a tasty ice cream treat. It's been a long time since I've had a Dairy Queen Blizzard. Have y'all had those, the Dairy Queen Blizzard? They are very tasty. I like the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup one myself. What's your favorite flavor of Blizzard? 
and then here through the background. So that's step one of this wintry, blustery um, effect. So I just want some subtle ones. You've never had one? Oh, have you ever come across a Dairy Queen? Especially if you're here in the U.S. I don't know if they have them internationally, but if you're here in the U.S. Strawberry cheesecake, that sounds delicious. I didn't even know they had that flavor. Cookies and cream, very good. Frog legs are yummy. They have a flavor called frog legs. How long has it been since I've been to a Dairy Queen? I gotta track one down here in Southern California. Have them all over the place in Texas. Now I'm gonna do the same, same thing with the white gel pen for some... some bigger, more vibrant snow, snowflakes. Well, not snowflakes yet, just kind of the wind, the snow whipping through. At slightly different angles, but always kind of angling, angling in the same uh, direction. And some through the background here. All right, so that gets the, the, the flow going, but now I need to put in the actual flakes. And now I'm gonna to start to draw those in, in different sized chunks, some following the line. See, I'm gonna need a place to sign. I'll probably sign through here, so I wanna keep a, this, this section here more open for my name. But I can put some big flakes and some teeny tiny flakes. So now I've created with this here, this element, this, this uh, snowy scenario. So now we're telling more of a story. Before it was just an angry dude, now it's an angry dude in snow. This is a fun little, little texture you can do for your characters. And letting it overlap parts of his face and hair. Putting some really big ones. Now I want to be careful how I stagger these so that they're not too uniform, which is tough to do. It's easy to get into almost a, the spacing is all equal, equal distant. And then it looks a little too, too uniform. It's not as random as we would hope to achieve. And that's kind of, could be a challenge. So I kind of have to look at the previous uh, snowflakes I've, I've dropped in and how can I um, vary it? Where am I, I need a more, thicker one, where am I, I need a more, more concentration. All right, so now I can come in here and put in my signature and the date. I don't have a lot of space here, so I'm gonna use my black micron. And we'll just run it right along the side here. Today is the 10th, is that correct? Yes. There we go. Sabretooth on a on an orange post-it note. So that was definitely a lot of fun. Definitely a lot of fun to figure out his expression, put in all the details, and uh, and then kick it up a notch here with a, a snowy background effect. So let's flip the camera around and we can uh, wrap up this uh, live stream. All right, let me re readjust into the rig here. And there we go, into the rig. Gang, thank you so much. I hope you had fun. I know I had a lot of fun. I hope you had fun too. 
I will be posting a shot of Sabretooth here on all of my social media, or at least on my Twitter, Instagram, and Art of Todd Knock Facebook page. So uh, if you're not following me on any of those uh, social media platforms, the links are in the video description below. So just, uh, you can go and give me a follow. Uh, thanks for all the kind words. I'm so glad y'all had fun. Thanks for all the comments, live viewers. And if you're watching this on replay, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. If you like what you saw, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you've just discovered my channel, feel free to subscribe. Just go ahead and smash that subscribe button. And then you can just tap the bell to set your notifications to alert you for when I schedule my next live streams, which right now I, I broadcast or I do live streams every weekday, 9 a.m. Pacific time. That's 12 noon Eastern, 4 p.m. Um, Greenwich Mean Time. If you're international, you should be able to calculate your, your time zone via that. And hopefully here on the weekend, I might do some surprise live streams. So you want to make sure you're subscribed and you have your notifications set so that you get alerted in case I do some surprise live streaming through the weekend um, during this coronavirus time. So I hope everyone's staying safe. Hopefully you're staying well. Hopefully you're having uh, a good time with those that you are uh, stuck at home with. Remember to treat everyone with kindness, grace, and remember that we're all going through this together. If we can have grace and kindness on each other, it'll hopefully make this go a little bit better, and hopefully we'll get back to normal really, really soon. So thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for drawing with me. If you post this on the Instagram, please use the hashtag postitpopart and tag my account, at Todd Knox, so I can get a chance to see what you did too. So uh, gang, I really appreciate it. Always fun to hang with you, and I'll see you again really soon. I'm Todd Knock. Keep on drawing. Keep having fun. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.